All right. Well, I have three o'clock. So Dr. Phil, Dr. Bailey, if you'd like to go ahead and welcome folks and get us started, we'll get going. Well, hello there. Um, I, I recognize one of the names. Um, <laughs> hola, Karen. Um, so my name is Phil Bailey and I'm head of the international office. Um, and uh, I appreciate uh, Dr. Barlow offering this session on academic integrity because we've had uh, too many international students run up against uh, policies of plagiarism and, and other things that have to do with academic integrity. Um, and some of it is innocent. I've, I taught at UCA for 24 years and taught international students and domestic students and um, I would always talk about issues of plagiarism and copying work from other people and n nothing, nothing I said solved the problem necessarily. We still had issues. And so if, if we can learn something today about um, how to make sure that you avoid making a mistake, um, I think it's well worth our time. I have seen vice presidents at this university lose their jobs because they cut, cut and paste information from the internet and publish it under their name. So mm -hmm. some of the problems seem um, less serious than you might think, but in academia, they're actually much more weighty, much more serious um, than they might be out in the business world, to be honest. And so that's why your professors take these issues so seriously. And I, I encourage you to be attentive and ask any questions that uh, Dr. Barlow can clarify as you move forward with your graduate degree. Um, and with that, thank you guys for attending and thank you, Dr. Barlow. Thank you. Appreciate you all joining us today. Um, I'm Dean Barlow, uh, Dean of the Graduate School. I hope you've seen me before. I hope that you were able to join us in our orientations at the beginning of the semester. Um, but it is, you know, I'm, I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to talk with you about academic integrity. And as uh, Dr. Bailey said, we've had um, a lot of issues popping up. Probably just the past two years has more than doubled what I saw in the first three years that I was here. So um, really pleased to have this opportunity to talk about academic integrity. I do want to just give you an overview of the information I'll be talking about. Uh, I want to be able to answer the question, what is academic integrity? want to talk a little bit about some of the common violations of academic integrity. So these are things that I've seen in my time here at UCA. want to help you to know exactly what happens if you are um, ever receive notice of an academic integrity violation, and then also share some advice on how to avoid some of these scenarios. So before we get too far into this, we've probably already said the term academic integrity at least a half dozen if not a dozen times. So I'm just kind of curious to as to where we are in terms of understanding that phrase. And so I'm I will launch a poll in just a second. And my question is how well do you understand that term academic integrity? So your choices are um, I'm unfamiliar with the phrase and so maybe you've never heard it before and that's fine. If so that will be your choice. Next is maybe you've heard of it, but you're not really sure what it means. Our third choice will be that you have a general sense of what it means. So you have some idea, maybe just based on what we've said so far, you have an idea about it. And then finally, at the high level here, D, it would be that you know what it is and you could explain it to someone else. So thinking about those as your choices, let me launch this first poll. And I'll show you the results so that y'all can see them. So we've got one person in our group that feels really good about it. Um, we've got a couple, about half of us have a general sense about it and then some that have only heard about it. So that's great. That tells me where you all are. Let me stop sharing. And, um, and so I'll be thinking about that as we're moving through this. Okay, so when I, started putting this together, I thought, what is academic integrity? Like, how do I go about defining that for people? And so I actually went, I found a um, website, a, a group, it's the International Center for Academic Integrity, and that's where I pulled this definition. And so basically, academic integrity is a commitment 
even in the face of adversity, to these six fundamental values. Honesty, first and foremost, I think being honest about what you've done and, and who you are and your, what represents you as an individual. Trust, being able to trust someone, being able to trust you and you trust them. Fairness, being fair, um, respect, showing respect for others, um, your classmates, your faculty members, yourself. Uh, responsibility is a big one, like taking responsibility for your actions, um, thinking about the response, you know, what will come after your actions and then taking responsibility for that. And then also courage and courage is an important part of academic integrity. So I hope that I remember to come back to that term in just a second. But so this is a definition that the International Center for Academic Integrity developed. In that definition, the word I want to key in on for a moment is adversity. So it's having those traits or those values, but even in moments of adversity. So my question, and I just want you to think about it for a second, is like as a graduate student, and you all are starting your graduate um, school program, or maybe you've been here a while, but think about what happens when you're a graduate student. What might be a situation, you know, what might represent adversity to a graduate student where you would be tempted to be dishonest? So just think for a second, like what an example might be, what comes to mind for that? And so let me share some moments of adversity that some graduate students have faced in the past year. And these are examples of real things that made it to me because of the issues around academic integrity. So some examples of adversity in graduate school. My assignment is due in 15 minutes and I will not be able to finish in time. So imagine you're enrolled in an online class, you have an assignment that's due at midnight, and it's 1145 and there's no way that you're going to finish that assignment in time. That is an example of adversity in graduate school. Here's another one that I've had. I'm not sure what to say and don't want to sound dumb. So maybe that's a discussion board and your professor has put a question up and you're supposed to type your answer in and you don't know what to say and you surely don't want people to realize that you don't know what's going on. I cannot figure out this problem. So imagine you have a homework assignment and there's a problem on that homework that you're supposed to figure out, maybe to turn it in and you can't figure that out to save your life. That's a moment of adversity. And then here's another one. I have to use the computer lab on campus to complete the assignment, but I live off campus. So this is a student who is off campus, has limited opportunity to access transportation to get to campus, and yet they need to be here to work on a, with a specific program on, in the computer lab. So all of those are examples of, ad, sorry, are examples of adversity, right, that graduate students face in the academic world. We know that as students, that are, there are other examples of adversity that you all deal with. Sometimes that's related to your bills that you have to pay and things of that nature. But today I'm focusing on um, adversity that we face in our academics. <clears throat> Some people think that sometimes this academic integrity stuff only applies to maybe when you're taking a test, but it could be that you have an, uh, an assignment. It could be a written paper that you have to type and turn in. It could be discussion board post where these issues arise, or it could be that multiple choice test. So all of these, any space in which you're operating academically are places where you might um, hit some adversity and then your values are challenged. So the question then becomes, how do you respond in those situations, right? So some common violations of academic integrity. I'm going to do another poll. And this poll, I have some, I have four different scenarios and I'm asking you which of these are examples of academic integrity violations. So things that shouldn't, should not be happening. The first example, and you'll be able to choose more than one if you like. The first example is using a sentence from a book in your discussion board post. My second example is submitting a paper that you wrote in a previous class. 
So maybe you have a similar topic. So rather than write a new paper, you use one from a different class, a different semester. My third example, working with a classmate on a homework assignment. And then finally, submitting someone else's assignment. So putting it in as if it's your own. So let me launch my poll. And again, you can choose more than one. And I'll end the poll and share the results. So looking at our responses, all of us agree that submitting a paper that you wrote in a previous class is um, not appropriate. So that would be a violation of academic integrity. Um, most of us are thinking that using the sentence from a dis in a discussion board post that you pull from a book um, is inappropriate, as well as submitting someone else's assignment is inappropriate. And about half of us are um, concerned about working with a classmate. So I'm going to stop sharing and go ahead and tell you that all of those can be examples of academic integrity violations. And so some of it, you have to know a little bit more maybe about the context of it, but let's talk about each one of these just very quickly. So this first one, using a sentence from a book in your discussion board post. So if you ever find yourself with your book open and you are writing or you're typing what you see in that book, you're setting yourself up to be copying somebody else's work. And then we're reading it thinking that you're claiming that to be your own. So it's really important that if even in a discussion board post, if you're using a sentence from the book, that you cite the book, that you put the page number that it came from, that you put quotation marks around it. So it's very clear that you quoted that from that book. And, um, and even if you change a word or two, like I've had some students who copy a sentence and then change one word and think that that's enough, but that's not, that's still considered plagiarism. So it's really best to close the book, set it aside, and then summarize things using your own words. But if you find yourself copying a sentence or so out of a book, put it in quotation marks and make it very clear that you're quoting from that book. But you might also wanna ask your instructor, should you be quoting from the book in this discussion board post? The second example I had, submitting a paper that you wrote in a previous class. You know, really, if you found yourself in a situation where you took a class last semester, you wrote a, a paper on, I don't know, data analytics, and then you find yourself in another um, course and they're asking for another paper on data analytics, have a conversation with your faculty member. They might say, well, yeah, you could potentially use part of that paper. They're probably going to say no don't use any of that paper. And the thing is like, we have tools that will help us to know whether that paper has been submitted before. So the go-to thought is you always are submitting new work in your next class, but you could have a discussion with your instructor to find out if that's a possibility. This is another example I have, and this one comes up quite a bit. Um, in fact, it's true for a lot of international students in um, studying in the MBA program is where I've seen it the most. They'll work with a classmate on a homework assignment thinking that it's okay. And then when the papers come in, they look so much alike that the faculty member says, no, this is an academic integrity violation. So, you know, depending on what you're doing, it might be okay, but don't just assume it. Ask your professor if working with a classmate on a homework assignment is okay, because if they haven't said it, you should assume that it is not okay. They want to see your work. And then finally, submitting someone else's assignment, submitting it in and having it represent your own is definitely not something that you should be doing. We've had that happen. And usually there's some story about how I had to borrow somebody's computer and I accidentally submitted their assignment instead of my own. But regardless of the story, it ends up being an academic integrity violation because it was somebody else's work represented as yours. So all of these are common examples of violations that have happened on this campus with graduate students in, in the past year. And that's why we're here today because I don't want to see these continuing to happen. So just so that you'll know what happens if you do receive an academic integrity violation, there is a process that's laid out in the student handbook. First of all, the instructor will, um, you'll be notified of it. They notify the department chair and so forth. 
and the instructor chooses the penalty. Often it is an F on the um, assignment, and uh, sometimes that F is a zero, and often that zero is enough to reduce a person's grade so that they might end up failing the class. So we don't want that to happen. Um, students do have the option to appeal. So there is an appeal process where you can argue your case as to why you believe you sh shouldn't be accused of an academic integrity violation. Um, but I think I've seen one appeal like uh, overturned in favor of the student. Most of the time, it just comes right on through and, and the appeal process is not a success for the student. Afterwards, then the graduate students have to meet with me as the graduate dean, which is why I have all these different stories about what happened because I've had the chance to sit and talk with each student and hear what happened. And it, again, it's those moments of adversity that I shared earlier that tend to um, trigger these instances. And then after that, the student has to complete an online academic integrity workshop. So it's like completing a, a mini course online and the student has to pay for it. And it used to be $100. It may be more than that now, but that's an expense that the student has to incur. So be mindful of that. And then if it's your second violation, and we don't have very many students that make it to a second violation, but it does happen, uh, then you go before the Academic Integrity and Discipline Committee, and then they may release you from the university. Um, they may decide that you should be put on probation for a while and or suspended for a while. And so that's definitely a step we don't want to get to. So advice. So here's we get down to the nitty gritty. What is my advice for you as a graduate student studying here at UCA? Uh, number one, do your own work, right? So anytime you've got an assignment, do your own work. If it doesn't feel like you should do it, then don't do it, right? So if it doesn't feel right to be submitting a paper from a previous class, don't do it. If it doesn't feel right to be submitting somebody else's work, don't do it, right? That's part of um, having that academic integrity and those six values that I talked about earlier. Properly give credit to sources. So as I was saying a moment ago with quotations, if you're quoting from a book, put it in quotation marks and cite that source that's a part of giving proper credit to those sources. And then probably my biggest piece of advice is to talk to your instructor. Um, those instances where you might want to collaborate with someone on homework, you know, ask your instructor, is this going to be okay? If you um, are bumping up against a deadline and you just know you're not going to get that work done, talk to your instructor. They may give you an extension. And so your instructor is your friend here in these cases, and they want to mentor you through this process. They want to see you be successful. So don't be afraid to go and talk to your faculty member um, to get guidance on how to move forward. So those are the points that I wanted to make today. I wanted to give you some additional insight into what academic integrity means. And basically it boils down to those six values and it's really about how those values kick in when you are faced with a moment of adversity. I've shared some of the common violations that I've seen, um, as well as what happens if you are um, accused of having an academic integrity violation, and I've shared some advice. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and I'll just pause to see if we have any questions. Dr. Bailey, you want to tell us about those students that left that time last year? Well, they're, they're, you know, it's, it's frustrating working with students and help, helping them try to realize their academic dreams and then see them make a, really a simple mistake. Um, mm -hmm. I used to tell my students, when in doubt, cite, put quotation marks, mm -hmm. right? Never use more than three words from the internet or from a book mm -hmm. that you don't put in quotes because Students don't understand that professors read all kinds of writing all the time. And there's just certain academic writing that um, I think even at the graduate level, not all the students attain. And so there, you think that you can use two sentences and not worry about quoting and not put the citation in your bibliography and you'll be all right. But more often than not, some professor is going to catch you. It may not be everyone. But if you do it a lot, you're going to get caught. And the, I think the 
the advice about ask, asking for an extension, that's a good advice. Some, some professors will say, well, the due date is May 20th, and you all have to have it done there. Um, but if you turn it in a week later, I can give you a, a B on it, but I can't give you anything better. Mm -hmm. Well, it's better to get a B as your maximum grade than to turn in something that's not yours and risk, you know, failing the class. And, and um, so, unfortunately, this is a really pro uh, important topic. But um, you can be accused of bad writing if you quote too much, if your whole paper is citation, but you can't be flunked and you right. can't be expelled, <laughs> okay? Yeah. So um, you can't oversight. Um, and then you can learn how to paraphrase mm -hmm. and how to summarize another person's argument and just at the end of the paragraph where you're summarizing, you put in the 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 citation for so someone could find the ideas if they're looking for them but uh you guys i really encourage you to put a a question in the chat for dr barlow or um to un, unmute yourself and just ask any question you may have i love these awkward moments waiting for a question <laughs> i will say that if a question comes up later and you want to ask it, you know, please feel free to email us here at the graduate school. You can email me directly if you like, or email our general um, email, and we'll be happy to get you the information you're looking for. Um, I'll also say that this was recorded, and so we'll get this uploaded to our YouTube channel. And once we do that, we'll send that um, link out to folks so that you can look back at it again. And then if that jogs uh, some questions for you, you know, please ask those and we'll get them taken care of. Hopefully I won't ever have to talk to you about this again. Um, and that's the goal is to make people aware. Like I don't think people, most of the folks that I've talked to in the last couple of years about academic integrity violations, they didn't do something thinking they were doing it wrong. They, um, or at least they were really good storytellers because they convinced me that they had the best intent and that they weren't aware. And most of the time when we talked about ac academic integrity, they thought about blatant cheating on a test. And they thought about like just completely copying somebody else's paper and turn it in. What I hope that you walk away with today is understanding that while those are very serious academic integrity violations, um, cheating is not limited to those small, to those large instances, that something as small as copying a sentence in a discussion board is considered cheating or it's an academic integrity violation. That's what really what I want you to think about because then you'll begin to realize how important it is for you to do your own work, okay? So with that, I will say, I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon and an even better semester. I hope it's off to a great start and that it, you are very successful. If there's anything that I can do um, to help you to be successful this semester, please let us know here at the Graduate School. All right. So y'all have a good one. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye.